You've been telling us to focus on the services mm -hmm. all along. How do you how do you put this whole report into perspective? Was it better than feared? Yes, no doubt about that. I mean, think about all the fears that we got in the last couple of weeks, and it all started with Taiwan Semiconductor. Everybody got scared. Obviously, we watched a lot of the chip stocks start to move to the downside, but I think the interesting part about this was Tim Cook reassured everybody just how strong the 10 is for Apple. I mean, it's not what everybody had said. They said nobody wants it. You look over at China, it's up 20 percent. Scott, services you mentioned, which I think is still very, very important. Tim Cook seems to think that this is going to be the driver of Apple if you go out the next five years. It will be the driver surpassing the phone. Here's the other thing. Keep an eye on wearables. I'm going to keep saying that, just like I said about services. You should, because well, it's now the size of a Fortune 300, according to Tim And $3.9 billion dollars this last quarter, uh, up 45-plus percent. I mean, when you put all of that together on the downside, after you look at the phone that came in line, that's a pretty decent quarter. And by the way, Europe was up 9 percent year over, year over year as well. So there has been strength, you know, geographically as well across, as, as across all the different segments. So, Weiss, you can't call this uh, a company that, not innovating anymore. They've innovated themselves into an entirely new legitimate business. They're, they are no longer an iPhone dependent company. Just push back Less than ever before. Tell me where the innovation is. They've innovated a the services the business show. that is, uh, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want me to tell you? $48 billion by, by 2020. Service, biz, service business is a good business. It's still not a very large part of their business. It's growing, I'll give you that. iPhone sales, no matter what Tim Cook says, he's great with hyperbole saying it's a record quarter, but if you're looking, for example, for a number of 20, and the prior number was 10, and you get 11, it's still a record quarter. But you have 3% phone growth, and that is a mature market, and that's where their margins are. So the margins are going to come down again, okay? So this is a, a sigh of relief. But the handoff is happening. <coughs> I give you a fanboy over here. The handoff is happening. You're getting services. Been long in a long time, bro. But, yeah. but you're not. I own the stock still. <laughs> Never okay? short on insults. And you should be. I, I own the stock. But you're, st you're not getting the growth in new users in the iPad. He said 50% of new <laughs> users. Right. But it's still a mature business. Max, they've never really gone there. So you're betting with services. It's great business to bet on. But the phones drive the margins, right? All right. But you and can make money in the down. stock. So I think it's going to be fine. Is where I come out on it, because Good. expectations have now been reduced. Farmer sorry, Jake. sorry, it was a little much there, Steve. That but was. <laughs> look, let's, first off, we can put to bed the idea that Taiwan Semi or any of the Asian suppliers have any predictive power whatsoever about iPhone sales, okay? And it's been about three or four quarters that everybody's freaked out when Taiwan Semi or some other Asian supplier says something bad about production and all of a sudden Apple falls out of bed. Forget that. Whatever Apple's doing, it's not entirely dependent upon their supply chain. They're obviously diversifying. The other thing I think is very important here, besides services, is they're showing no indication that iPhone 10 was mispriced. That was something I was a little bit worried about going into this. First off, the average selling price, while it was a little bit disappointing, just a little bit, was up 11% year over year, and Tim Cook was adamant that they're not backing off of this $1,000 plus iPhone 10 pricing. As for the $48 billion in services, Scott, I think that's a sandbag, because look, right now they're running at $36 billion and growing at over 30 yep. percent. Heck, they might be at 48 billion well into next year, not 2020. Look, a lot went right in this quarter. I, I and I don't see any reason that it's going to get interrupted. I think this this continues a slow burn higher. Kevin O'Leary, is that how you see it? How do you feel about Apple today? Well, I always have been focusing on the services growth. And so we went from 18 percent growth last quarter to 31 percent this quarter. Now, I don't know if that's sustainable. That's an extraordinary metric to look at because what it's doing, and I, th and I think the way to look at Apple and the concern people had the last two years was, is this behemoth a consumer electronics company? And, and the end game in consumer electronics is margin compression. We're not getting that. This is, the margins are being maintained, and I think it has a lot to do with the domestic market being verti vertically integrated. When you go buy a phone from Apple, you go to their store. So they're not having to give up retail margins in the traditional fashion to a whole series of distributors, two-tier distribution. So that seems to be changing the, the way people look at it. So now it's, it's, a, it's a brand with extraordinary high-end margins that seems to be maintained because the, the, the services business is pure cash profit. And it's, if, if they really can keep it growing at 30-plus percent, 
there's never been a company like this that has been able to stay out of the trap of being consumer electronics. And after having said all that for a value guy like me, this thing's trading at a 15 PE. And it's doing all the things I love, increasing the dividend. Increasing that the big, dividend, returning cash to shareholders. dividend. So, and, so and, and it's got, you know, $100 million of buyback. I don't like buyback. I would have preferred all that cash come back to me in a dividend increase of 30%. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.